My business partner Mauricio and I have created videos with retention graphs like this, which has led to views like this, this, and even this. And today I'm gonna show you the seven editing techniques that we use to make this happen consistently. By the way, I'll be using CapCut to show you these techniques because it's free and they've also sponsored this video, but you can use any editing software that you'd like. Starting with number one, don't over edit for your audience. A mistake I see a lot of creators make is that they think more editing equals better performance, which simply isn't the case. I've even made this mistake myself in the past. Just take a look at the YouTuber Penguin Zero. The man just throws in a few cuts and b-roll transitions and still brings in a few million views per video or take a look at my buddy micaiah who's brought in hundreds of thousands of views with very simple a-roll and stock footage the point i'm making is that editing is not the star of the show it's simply the supplement which means that you need to align your style of editing with your audience's preferences and also realize that the value of your content is way more important than the way you present it if you have a younger audience you'll likely need to add more transitions and fancy editing gimmicks to drive retention, but on the contrary, if you have an older audience, you probably won't need to employ this as much, and doing it might even overwhelm your audience. So again, the level of editing that you're employing in your content really just depends on who you're making videos for, and again, you definitely don't want to over-edit. Number two is to raise your graphs. Now, everyone knows that intros are the most important part of your video to drive retention. So you'll want to do what's called front-loading your video, which means that you'll first want to pay special attention and put more work into the first 30 seconds or so of your video. We keep the pace of our videos pretty similar throughout the entire thing, but definitely add more animations, b-roll, and so on if it makes sense for the audience in those first 30 seconds to really drive retention and keep viewers for the rest of the video. But you'll also want to take this a step further if you really want to increase your retention. Now, when you've consistently published videos for a while, you'll start to get more and more data on your audience and how long they watch your videos. This will obviously depend on video length and also the age of your viewers for the most part. So, for example, if you have a younger audience, your average watch time might be in the range of like three minutes versus if you have an older audience, it might go up to let's say six or seven minutes. Whatever this is, you'll want to expand the effort that you put into the first 30 seconds of your video to encompass the same amount as your average watch time so you're pleasing as many viewers as possible. Now, beyond just raising your graphs, you'll also want to flatten them after the front load of your video. You obviously don't have to edit as much in the latter part of your video, but you definitely don't want a huge drop in retention after those first First, let's say three or four minutes. Otherwise, you'll see dips like this where people drop off of your video and kill your attention. So to avoid this, you're gonna wanna keep a consistent style and relatively consistent pacing to bridge viewers from the beginning of your video to the end of your video and bump up your retention. Number four is to keep the big transitions for the big moments in your video. Transitions are a super important part of the editing process, but if you're gonna throw in a huge whoosh or zoom or whatever else, then you're gonna wanna make sure you do it at the right time to keep retention high. Some creators I talk to think big transitions in their edits equal better retention, but unfortunately, they don't. Instead, they really only work when you're doing something big, changing scenes, or really anything else that warrants that big transition versus otherwise where people get distracted, you over edit, and they click off. For example, take a look at this clip of Mr. Beast. You can see that he uses a big transition sequence when he's going to one of the biggest houses in the video. The key here is that if you're going to use a big transition sequence, it needs to be at the right time. And in Every other scenario, you're probably just gonna wanna use jump cuts so you're not, again, being distracting, over-editing, and losing viewers. Remember, editing shouldn't steal the show. It should really just be a supplement to the value of your video. Number five is to focus on sound design. Sound design is crucial for creating immersion in your video, and that doesn't mean everything needs a sound, but for example, if an icon slides onto the screen, you're gonna wanna have a sliding noise. If money falls on the floor, you're gonna wanna have a noise for the money, and so on. Or if you're using actual footage in your video, you can even artificially improve sounds to get the exact same effect. For example, let's take a look at this clip in the movie The Lord of the Rings. Bilbo drops the ring here, and in order to convey the idea that the ring is super heavy, the sound design team behind the movie artificially enhanced the sound. Obviously, don't overuse this. For example, if you have subtitles in your video, you're not going to want to have a pop anytime a subtitle comes on screen, because again, it gets distracting, you're over-editing, and you lose viewers. But otherwise, be tasteful with it. Include sounds when you can to immerse the audience in your video, and I promise you, your retention will skyrocket. And if you're using CapCut PC like I am right now, CapCut even includes a whole library of free sound 
sound effects that you can use in your videos to achieve this effect. Now, building off of just using sound effects tastefully in your videos, you're also gonna wanna purposefully use music as a tool to boost retention. I suggest first having the volume quiet enough where you can actually hear your voiceover. For me, this is like negative 15 to negative 25 decibels below the voiceover volume, but for you, it could be different. However, on top of that, you'll also want to change the music when big things happen in your video. Like when you go from the intro to the body of your video, or when you move from a section to another section or a place to a different place, just like you'd use transitions, you're gonna wanna change music to bring viewers over to these big changes. When I first started on YouTube, I saw music as an afterthought and I would honestly just throw one or two songs in a video after I was finished with everything else. But I soon realized that it was killing my retention. Music is powerful, so you definitely want to be purposeful and use it to bridge viewers over different sections of your video, different moments, settings, whatever. Number six is to get creative with your edits. For example, you can play subtitles on your video as a supplement to whatever you're saying, but also if you're gonna do that, don't make the same mistake I used to and make all your subtitles manually. Instead, if you're using CapCut PC, you can use CapCut's built-in auto captions tool to automatically add subtitles in whatever style you want to your video. To use it, all you have to do is click a button and if you have an audio track in your timeline, CapCut PC will automatically create captions for you without you having to do a thing. You can also use CapCut or any other video editing software to create motion tracking on objects, add text overlays, create trending effects, and so much more to add just a spice of creativity to your video. And CapCut is great because it makes this way easier. All this does is keeps your edits interesting for your viewers and also makes you more unique and more likely to stick out to your viewers. Finally, tip seven is to give your viewers a break. Definitely don't be afraid to give your viewers a break. A lot of YouTubers hyper stimulate their viewers with side by side or even overlapping voiceover tracks and cuts and eventually it just becomes way too much for a viewer to digest if they're getting information thrown at them like crazy. So instead, in between different sections of your video, I'd recommend giving your viewers a little bit of breathing room and you'll notice that some public speakers even do this. Like for example, Barack Obama here has breaks in the way he speaks. We know the battle ahead will be long, but always remember that no matter what this makes him appear more confident and it doesn't hurt him because his audience is engaged enough to a point where little pauses really just keep them listening as opposed to making them tune you out. So definitely cut your voiceovers this way too and you'll have better retention instantly on your videos.